But while we still have time, what is the next question? And yes, the Emperor protects. Although that is not yes. my favorite saying, just to be clear, <laughs> but that is a cool saying still. Okay. Uh, the next question is uh, from Makes1999. Do yeah. you think Illidan will make a return once he learns that Sargeras was manipulated with the Void knowing uh, now having a possibility of a threat in Dragonflight and also since the dragons are sort of related to the Force of Order? I think there's a lot to unpack in there as yeah. it's sort of um, misguided in its uh in its statement if i if i may because i i think the the question is good but um it, it's kind of making some assumptions that are not true yeah i, I would say firstly we are assuming that sargeras was mislaid we are assuming that sargeras or at least the question assumes that sargeras did just follow along which doesn't necessarily ring true. Um, there is a lot of things that Sargeras did that one could argue didn't necessarily go in favor of Zuval. One of the best examples of this, Zuval obviously wants his helm and his sword to be on Azeroth because he wants to create the Lich King. Sargeras decides to do what the Nathrazim suggest, but with a caveat, a twist. He tells one of his generals to destroy Nurzul's body and instead enslave his soul inside the helm and inside the sword. So... Yes, the Lich King technically exists on Azeroth, and to the extent that the Lich King could help pave the way for the Burning Legion, but the Lich King has no ability to move. The, the Lich King is sort of trapped inside the ice of uh, Icecrown Citadel in Icecrown. So this slows down Zuval's influence quite heavily, probably by a, a few years at the very least. It, it, it severely limits the ability of Zuval to enact what ultimately is his goal, which is to destroy all life on Azeroth, uh, unite all life in the undeath uh, or in the scourge, and then, of course, bring about his penultimate battle. If you don't believe that, simply read uh, the book Arthas. Uh, Arthas literally says that's what he wants to do. Um, and we now know that it wasn't really just Arthas speaking at that point. It was sort of, the, it was Zuval speaking at that point. So that is exactly what Zuval wants to do. Sargeras seems to use Zuval as much as Zuval uses him. So that that's sort of the first assumption that, you know, could or could not be. The next assumption that you make is that the Void is the ultimate threat. Again, that is a wild assumption, considering uh, in the entirety of Azeroth, the only beings that have always sort of been very honest about their intentions and about what they do have been Gul'dan, first and foremost. Gul'dan is just a bad bitch like he just does bad things for bad reasons and he makes no excuses for himself and then of course the void the old gods the old gods have not really lied to us they they don't lie they tell us exactly what they're about to do they they make they don't mince their words not only that but we still have that and this is something that i really hope blizzard have not forgotten about this but if they have that will be super sad but we have that whole story of um, Nazoth tasting us in Battle for Azeroth. You know, uh, the, dungeon, the raid in Battle for Azeroth, it's like two bosses, two or three bosses long. In that raid, they tell us 
that they're testing us. Every single time we wipe, they say that we're not strong enough yet. And when we finally win, they, they sort of make mention of the fact that we passed the test. So what was Nazoth testing us for? Uh, one would think that Nazoth would want us dead, considering we want to stop him. Uh, and we have stopped him. At least we think we've stopped him. But then, if he knew that we were to stop him, if he, because they can see all of the different timelines, he would have ultimately known that there is a timeline in which we will stop him. Wouldn't it have been easier for him just to kill us? No, he, he, he tests us. He wants to know if we are ready. What for? We don't know. Now, to answer your question, sort of getting all of the misconceptions out of the way, I do believe that Illidan is going to return. Now more than ever, considering the fact that we have, I would say, let's say, let's say 80% confirmation that Malfurion is dying in the next expansion. This leaves the door wide open for another Storm Rage. Perhaps also leaves a, a space in Tyrande's bed for another Storm Rage. <laughs> um, you know, uh, it would be quite the drama if uh, Tyrande ends up with Illidan. Um, <laughs> so that, that could obviously happen, right? Uh, more to the point... I do foresee Sargeras perhaps breaking through to his brothers whilst in the Pantheon. Perhaps f explaining to his brothers that they were they have been the ones that's that's been misled. They are the ones that have not seen. They are the ones that have missed the truth. Will Illidan believe this? Illidan is quite emotional when it comes to Sargeras. He hates Sargeras, obviously. Um, I mean, the random firebat, he's obviously not going to say it like that, right? He's obviously not just not just going to go to her and say, hey, my brother just passed the uh, one a bang. You know, he's, he's probably going to do the whole, the, you know, the nice guy thing, you know? Sit next to her, hold her, let, you, let her cry on his shoulder. And then slowly he's going to run his hand down and, back, and down her back and back up again, you know. Just tracing the lines of her body. She's going to start to feel really comfortable. Nestle her head closer into his neck. You know, and then one thing leads to another. She looks up, tears rolling down her face. They look into each other's eyes. Well, she looks at his band-aid. He looks at her eyes. <laughs> um, you know, and, and then there's this moment. This moment. And the music starts playing. And they want to kiss, and their th their lips are getting closer and closer. And as their lips touch, the owl comes in, and Durandus like, oh, "Is that what it looks like?" And she runs away. Uh, and that's sort of the start of this love story. And then Illidan's gonna chase her all over Azeroth, and she's gonna run away because the owl saw her, and obviously, you know, that's Malfurion spying on her from the fucking Shadowlands, and it's a whole thing. And then right at the end of Dragonflight is when they kiss and Malfurion gives them his blessing because he's dead now and he can't give her the D, but he asks his brother if he would give her the D in his place. Uh, and Illidan There's says, one person you will. forgot in this scenario. Yeah? Maev, who hate, hates and loves Illidan and would probably go n crazy enough to try and kill Tyrande to make sure no one else can have him. Um, no, I think my Eve will be there on the wedding night. I think my Eve will join in. It's gonna be an orgy, you know. Uh, <laughs> that's just that's just what's gonna happen. Um, it's gonna be all over Pornhub. I promise you. Um, but no, I do think I do think um, Illidan is probably gonna return. The fact is, Illidan is a crowd is a crowd pleaser, and um, I think Blizzard is in enough trouble right now with World of Warcraft that it is a good idea to bring fan favorites back into the story, to sort of bring back characters that you know will drive players to the story, because almost everyone, even those that hate World of Warcraft, will have a slight tinge in the PP when they hear that Illidan is back, right? Your, your PP will flick a little, at least. Um, 
at the mere mention of Illidan. So yeah, I can I can see Illidan making his return. Story-wise, that has always been set up to be the case. This is why Illidan didn't lose his life at the end of Legion. Illidan stayed behind because Blizzard wanted Illidan, but they didn't want him permanently. They they want to keep Illidan as sort of a plot device. Now, I think Sylvanas is going to be a similar character in the future for World of Warcraft. I think Blizzard is sort of setting Sylvanas up to be another plot weapon or, or plot device in World of Warcraft. A, a character that probably within the next three or four expansions comes back for sort of like a quote-unquote cameo position within World of Warcraft, drives the story for a while, moves it forward a little bit, and then disappears again. Um, mainly because I think they've overused Sylvanas to the point where that really is the only type of character that she can be. This is perhaps what they're doing to Malfurion as well, moving Malfurion into Ardenweald, and we know that Malfurion isn't dead inside Ardenweald, so there is a very good chance that Malfurion himself will eventually play another role in one of the World of Warcraft expansions. We'll have to wait and see which one. Uh, but Illidan right now, poised, not in Dragonflight though. I, I have thought many a times at the potential story of Dragonflight, and I'm not sure how you, like where you would bring Illidan into the story of Dragonflight without it feeling a little forced. The first time I would bring Illidan back is when we finally deal with Ajara. Um, because that is where, in my opinion, Illidan would make the most sense. Is a story that deals with Ajara, since Ajara spent so much of her time um, sort of serving Sargeras. It, it, it would just make sense that, you know, I Illidan make his return there. So I think perhaps next expansion, we can look forward to an Illidan cameo, if not more. Um, and this is where we'll see Sargeras as well make his return, um, as well as the other Titans. So yeah, that, that's sort of, that, that's my prediction, at least at the moment. Uh, thank you so much for the question, by the way. I really appreciate that.